Hello, welcome to Forest Learn. In this video, we'll be discussing the magnetic field due to a solenoid, which is a long coil consisting of many turns with a current flowing through it. This video is part of a series or playlist of videos on electromagnetic induction, and the material we'll be looking at is prerequisite knowledge you need to have to make sense of the second type of induction, what I've called flux changes in a loop. Hopefully you'll be aware that if you move a magnetic compass around a bar magnet, the needle rotates. This is due to the needle aligning with the magnetic field lines, as you can see. If we try out the same thing with a solenoid instead of a bar magnet, we see pretty much the same behavior in the compass the needle rotates. And so we're forced to conclude that there must be a magnetic field around the solenoid, which is very similar to that of the magnetic field of a bar magnet. In particular, it means that the two ends of the solenoid can be regarded as magnetic poles, just like the north and south poles of a bar magnet. The magnetic field inside the solenoid is strong and approximately uniform as long as the coil is relatively long with many turns. If you're doing AQA or OCRA, you may have heard about search coils, which you can place inside a solenoid to investigate induction phenomena. There's actually a required practical on this for AQA. If you're given a diagram of a solenoid with magnetic field lines drawn in with directions, then it's quite simple to figure out which end will be the North Pole and which end will be the South Pole. Remember that in a bar magnet, the North Pole is the end where the magnetic field lines are directed away from the bar magnet, and the South Pole is the end where the magnetic field lines are directed towards the magnet. And that's exactly the same for a solenoid, as you can see here. Notice also the relatively strong and uniform magnetic field in the interior of the solenoid, which I mentioned a moment or two ago. Most of the time, though, you won't actually be given magnetic field lines drawn in on a diagram of a solenoid. And you'll have to figure it out for yourself which end will be a north and which end will be a south pole. Fortunately, it's quite straightforward. Consider the left end of the solenoid drawn. If we imagine looking at that end face on, it will appear like the following to us. The current is flowing anti-clockwise. The end is capitalized, and I stressed it because this end of the solenoid would behave like a magnetic north pole. The right end of the solenoid will therefore behave like a south pole. If we look at that end face on, we would see that the current flows clockwise. Notice I've capitalized the S. So to summarize, if the current flows anti-clockwise, when you look face on at the end of a solenoid, then you know that that end will be a north pole. On the other hand, if the current appears to be flowing clockwise, then you know that that end will be a south pole. Remember that we're talking about conventional current here. So if we say that current flows clockwise, that means that the flow of electrons will be in the opposite direction, so anti-clockwise. Even though we've been talking about a solenoid here, everything we've been discussing actually holds true for coils with turns of wire bunched much closer together, what are known as flat coils, and even just a single turn, i.e. just a loop of wire. Just so you're in no doubt, the fact that we can assign magnetic north and south poles to the ends of a solenoid means that if you bring two solenoids close together, current flowing in them, then they'll behave just like two bar magnets would if you brought them close together. So in this example here, because we've got a south pole and north pole close to each other, these two solenoids would experience mutual magnetic attraction towards each other. Finally, we've been looking at DC or direct current flow in a solenoid which means that the current flows in a fixed direction. With AC, or alternating current flow, the direction of the current continuously swaps, flowing one way and then the opposite direction. What this means, as you might expect, is that the poles of the solenoid also continuously swap between north and south. And we can see this if we bring a compass near one end of the solenoid. The flipping of the needle here is due to the fact that this end of the solenoid is continuously switching between a north and a south pole. We'll discuss alternating currents thoroughly later on. It's an important concept in EM induction and it's central to devices such as transformers. I just want to mention that I've been using 
these wonderful simulations provided by FET throughout this video. I'm really grateful to their hard work in, in making these great simulations available and I strongly recommend you check out their simulations. Uh, you can find the link in the description. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already and leave a comment or any questions you have. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for listening and I hope to see you soon.